Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring and my review of issue 65 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest magazine, the Partworks magazine from Hatchet Publishing in association with Games Workshop, which comes out every week priced at $7.99. As a subscriber, I get four issues once a month in a single bundle and this is the third issue from my current bundle. Um, what this magazine is all about is introducing people to the world of Warhammer 40,000 and you normally get some cover products which are plastic miniatures, occasionally you get paints, hobby supplies, and things like that. I have said in previous videos that in the last few issues um, I have not been as interested. I've been getting a lot of things that I already have or a lot of things that are repeats of things we've already had or um, recently just got a pot of paint which was a bit disappointing. However, this issue definitely makes up for that because this issue includes these two Space Marine heroes, not to be confused with the Space Marine heroes that were blind boxed products. Um, these are actually the Space Marine heroes that first appeared in Betrayal at Kalth, the standalone board game, which is an absolutely amazing game. And it um, recreates the attack of the word bearers on the Ultramarines on Kalth. And that means it's set in the heresy era so these are quite cool because these are not primaris heroes these are actually in heresy era armor which is nice it makes a nice little change um this is uh, the in the board game um this was the leader of the ultramarines and this was the leader of the word bearers but obviously um for the purposes of conquest magazine they have been uh, repurposed to both be ultramarines um this is a captain in um i don't know how to pronounce it cataphracti um cataphracti terminator armor um someone i'm sure someone will correct me if i'm mangling that pronunciation um his name was captain athon i believe and then over here we had um kertha said uh again i think that's what his name was but yeah so here they are um brought back for this magazine which is quite cool because uh, Betrayal of Kalth is out of production and these miniatures are now only available by direct mail order from Games Workshop and they retail for £30 for the pair. So this issue is a saving of £22 and a penny over the obscenely expensive price of these heroes. Um, so if you see this in a shop, it's well worth picking up. I mean, $7.99 for two heroes is going to be good value anyway, but £30 for those two um, is full retail price, which is a bit silly. Let's take a look at the frame. Here it is on one frame. Obviously, uh, in Betrayal of Kalth, this was in grey plastic, but for Conquest, it has been redone in the blue. Uh, pretty straightforward miniatures. They are not push fit. They do require glue. You can see they've got... Um, they do have a few nubs, but they don't have like pinning systems or anything. So you will need glue. Obviously, I recommend plastic glue because of the better bond. You just have to be careful with it. Uh, so Captain Athon here, I believe he's got a... What's he got? Is it combi melter or something? Some kind of combi weapon. Bolter and something else. Because it's got got this bit which goes on the side. That's a melter, isn't it? So yeah, he's got the bolter side and then he's got got the melter side. Um, good way to melt your bolter, that is. Um, and then we've got Kurtha said who has this power maul and uh, and something else. Was it just a just a plasma plasma pistol? What it looks of it. So there we go. Um, very nice miniatures. Uh, I have obviously got an assembled set from Betrayal at Kalth and they look really good when they're put together. Captain Athon is suitably chunky. Obviously, uh, if you've got a predominantly Primaris force, he he doesn't look as uh, much of an imposing leader as, as he might otherwise have done. But good miniatures at a really good price. Um, this is an excellent issue makes up for a lot of issues where I haven't really seen the value so much um, this is one of the good ones let's take a look inside the magazine 
So as always, we start with our fluff section. We've got a bit on Terminators. Um, some very nice artwork. The role of the Terminators. Smashing stuff and shooting stuff. That's the role of the Terminators. Um, we have a bit on Corn, the Blood God with this awesome piece of artwork. Obviously, Games Workshop artwork is generally awesome. So these magazines really are a bit of a feast for the eyes sometimes. Um, here we go. Blood letters and whatnot. And there we go. Here's a bloodthirster of insensate rage. He's not happy. He's gone Christmas shopping. He can't get a parking space, probably. That's what I look like. Um, more stuff in the showcase. What have we got? We've got blood letters. Uh, we've got Kalanak. We've got a blood crusher. How do you crush blood? You know, put it in a bag and then crush the bag, I guess. Um, possessed Chaos Space Marine with wings and stabby bits. Um, and then a cool image of Khan the Betrayer leading his guys into battle. Um, and then we go into a completely different subject. We go into the Tyrannic War. Just a little bit on that, a little bit on High Fleets. We've, they've talked about um, Tyranids in a previous issue. So this is just a, just a call back to that. And then we are into our assembly guide. Now, like I say, these aren't push fit miniatures. These are, um, they're, they're monopos and they don't have any options, but they're, uh, they're a little bit more um, difficult to put together than a straight up push fit one, but not much. Um, and obviously the instructions are very good. And the final result is excellent. I mean, if we look at these, we're into the painting guide here. And this is the, the miniatures with just base coat supplied. And you can see they're just great miniatures, loads of character. Um, Kurtha said as was, is particularly cool. He's just got a, a really nice flow to the miniature, the striding forward, shooting off to the side, cape flowing. Um, Captain Aethon is slightly more stoic and heroic. So, um, the painting guides, we've got base coats going on, shading going on, the details going on, and again, just really good, clean painting guides. Um, I've been consistently impressed with the painting guides in this magazine. Uh, they've, they've done good work. And there we go, there they are all finished. You can look at the front and the back and see what you've missed, touch up your details and stuff. And if you get something that's a close approximation of that, congratulations, you've done a cracking job. Because that's a very nice, nice, good, high quality tabletop miniature. And then we go into some new rules. And this is interesting because it's on about army lists and it's actually about creating an army roster. Now, up until now, well, actually up until last issue, um, they had done scenarios where they give you the army list. They say you're going to have these forces fighting these forces on this battlefield with terrain arranged in this manner. Last issue, they introduced a, a mission where you played it multiple times and each time you selected different forces to fight in it. And I said that was kind of like the first step in army building. And now we are actually getting a section on building an army and working out your PowerPoints and things like that. And and we actually have a, a, an army roster that you can photocopy and use, which is very useful, very helpful. Good stuff. And then we go into a new scenario, lead by example. And again, we've got one of these little campaign trackers because it looks like we're supposed to be playing this mission four times. This mission is designed to introduce the concept of creating your own army lists and setting up terrain in order to play missions. Play through the mission several times creating a different army roster for each time you play through the mission. Keep track on here. So, yeah, right. So, like I say, up until now, we've, we've been having fixed scenarios and they're now moving into the next and final phase of, of playing the game, which is building your own armies. And we have, look, we have a completely plain battlefield because they have talked in a previous issue about um, picking battlefields and setting up terrain. So 
you create the battlefield you want with the terrain you want. You build the armies you want. What's Our power rating is 25. So um, we are building forces to 25 power points. And then we're having a, having a, a fight, having a scuffle. Victory conditions are first player to eliminate enemy unit. Each enemy unit eliminated. Eliminate the enemy warlord. End the game with at least one unit in the enemy deployment zone. Play for six rounds. Very straightforward. But there you go. That's um, the next stage. The next stage is building your own army, creating your own tabletop, and, and fighting the games you want to fight, not just playing the narrative scenarios. Um, personally, I like narrative scenarios, and I like, um, I like creating little stories on the tabletop. Um, I'm not so much for points and and that sort of thing but this is always the ultimate end goal with with Warhammer 40k is to get to that point where you're um, creating armies for matched point play and eventually funneling people into the tournament scene and the need to consistently buy and upgrade your force to remain highly competitive um, and then we have our data sheets for the captains which is nice to have blank on the back, something that um, Games Workshop should have done in the recent Blackstone Fortress annual. But there we go. And that's it. That's everything in the issue. What a great issue. Um, cool new miniatures, a great price, um, some nice fluff, good painting guide, solid painting guide, and introducing that whole concept of building armies to points values. Excellent. Let's see what's next. Next, another really good issue, something I'm really looking forward to, a Plague Marine with Icon of Despair. This is a miniature I was actually going to buy, and I'm glad I didn't, because obviously I don't need to now. And then in issue 67, we have... Ah, it's scouts. At least they're the sniper scouts. They're cooler than the, uh, than the other scouts, but these are old miniatures that uh, are quite ugly and um, I've already got a bunch of them anyway but yeah they're, they're, they're quite ugly some customization may be in order to make them look halfway good but that is it as always in these videos what I'm going to do I'm going to put up a little running total this is the price of subscribing to the magazine at $7.99 an issue versus the price of purchasing all of the cover products at full retail price from a Warhammer store. So not taking into account things like online discounts, but also not taking into account the value of the magazine and any other subscriber gifts. And hopefully some people will find that interesting. But that is it from me for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider pressing that like button. If you have really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.